Hi everyone, Greg here. Today I'm going to dive into GCC and the compilation process. So you can see here I have a, a Hello World program. I'm going to compile it. I'm going to start with the simplest way possible of doing that, which is just GCC main.c. I get my a dot out as an input and it runs Hello World. Now I don't want um, a dot out as my uh, output file so I'm, I'm just gonna get rid of that uh, and I'm gonna tell uh, dash O stands for output so I want my file to be called hello and so now here I get a different name now here I don't have any functions other than the main function let's say I want to have another function in there And we're going to simply call this the say hello function. I'm going to call it here. Now, I just want to demonstrate GCC is not going to like this. Okay, it's going to uh, compile the main function. It's going to start from the top. It's going to go down. It's going to encounter say hello. And then it's going to say, but what is say hello? I don't know what that function is. It's only going to find out down here. So if I compile this, you see now it complains implicit declaration. Okay, I didn't say to the compiler what say hello is. So how can I fix that? I can put this in front it's one simple way of fixing it's not a good way but it will do the job so here we are now the reason it's not a good way is because then you need to put every function in your file in front of the main you need every function in the right order and that's not very practical so the way you normally do this is with a prototype so I'm just gonna take the prototype of the function Put it here, put the semicolon there, and now uh, it's going to compile it properly. Now, what is actually compilation? What do we mean when we talk about compiling? Well, compiling in the narrow sense simply means you convert code which is written in one programming language, you convert it into code in, written in another programming language. What compiling is in the broad sense and what people mean most of the time when they talk about compiling is converting code into an executable. And you see there's an entire process here. We're going to assume that we're talking about C code. The first step is the pre-processing stage. So if I go back here, I have statements here that are not stri strictly speaking C statements. They don't have a semicolon at the end. And they have this hash in front. These are the pre-processing statements. The same with this define here. It is a pre-processing statement. What will happen, the pre-processor will take this line here and it will replace this line with the contents of the file standard io.h. What it will do with this thing, everywhere where, where it sees k-y-e-l, the yellow color, what it will do, it will take this and it will replace it with whatever follows here. Okay, This is why you don't put a semicolon. If I were to put a semicolon here, then the text here would be replaced with that string followed by a semicolon and I would get a compilation error. So I can actually see the work that the processor does. So I can take CPP, which is the uh, this is a bit of a confusing name. It's got nothing to do with C++. This is the C preprocessor. And I can give it main.c. I can direct its output to test.c. And now I can have a look at what we got here. And you see there's a whole bunch of junk that got added. 
right and at the bottom here you can see my code you can see the main function you can see that this k yellow has now been replaced the define statements are gone right and what you will also notice if i go all the way to the top here now and if i go print f then here we see the prototype for print f which comes in front of um which comes before the moment that that function is being called so that the compiler actually knows what to do with it okay so that's basically what the preprocessor does there's more things it does um i i can use this for uh, any number of reasons for example if i want to write platform independent code so i'm just going to get rid of this here i don't need this anymore and i'm going to replace this and i'm going to take this bit of code over here right and now i have a platform independent hello world now you see those defines here i call these macros now there will be a number of macros defined by default when you run gcc and you can see those macros when you go cpp dm and then you redirect to defnil it will give you a list of macros is this working hold on did i mistype this mm. oh yeah oh, i shouldn't read it. okay i'm i mistyped that here so th those are all the macros and somewhere in that list you will see underscore underscore linux right so what i've done here in this code is if defined underscore underscore linux you just do a hello linux world if on the other hand what is defined is underscore underscore win 32 then it will do a different hello world so i can try this out And now I can run it, and then obviously it says "Hello Linux World." Okay. So another thing that I could use this for. Uh, let me get rid of this. Another reason macros are good for is I could include debugging code okay so i could say if define debug and then i could do print f all running good so far right so the underscore underscore file underscore underscore and the same thing with line those are macros that i get for free right and you'll see what they do they're very handy um okay so it didn't <laughs> it didn't happen this time because of course this macro is not actually defined i can define it from the command line and this is dash d debug whoopsie Okay, that's an int apparently. So now when I run that, it tells me all running good so far. Main.c, the name of the file, and line 18. Right, so this is line 18. Right, so obviously very handy for debugging. So I'm going to remove that again. 
And if I look now at the next stage of the process, I have optimization. I can uh, tweak the level of optimization. So I can say, uh, okay, I can get rid of that. I can say dash O, that's a capital O this time, dash O zero. And that basically means do not optimize, right? Then I can do several levels, one, two, and three. Now it's not recommended to use level three because sometimes this can break stuff, but one or two should be good. Now let's say that I put something in my code that is completely unnecessary. So I'm just going to do something completely useless here. Okay, so if I run this code, this loop here doesn't actually do anything. There's, there's nothing useful. Okay. So what is going to happen if I if I run it like this, it will perform that loop. If I do, uh, I'm not sure what I will do with level one, but with level two, it will definitely not perform it. It's just going to skip that step. Uh, it, it, the, the optimizer will just detect this is a pointless loop and it's not going to actually include it in the code. It's not going to actually compile that code. Okay, now I can prove that. Okay, the way I can prove that is because I can include debugging information. Okay, so let's say I go back to zero here. If I add a dash G, dash G means include debugging information in the executable. So let's say I don't, let's say I don't do that. Okay, and then I run GDB on hello. Right. If if I look at the uh, this is line. So, well, okay. I don't need this anymore either. I can get rid of that. So this is line fourteen here now. Okay. Um. So I have, of course, I changed the code. So now I should recompile. So GDB hello. I'm gonna put a break at fourteen. And what does it say? It says no symbol table is loaded. So there's no information, no data in that executable that tells it where line 14 is. Now I can run the code. Okay. But I can't step through the code uh, one line at a time. So I'm just going to quit out of that. Okay. I'm going to recompile it. But this time I am going to include dash G. I have again no optimization so gdb hello now i'm gonna put the break at was it 14 15 14 right 14 now i'm gonna run it and it's gonna stop at line 14 and now i can step through that code one step at a time and it's gonna go through that loop okay now i can do P for print, print variable I, and it's at number 13, and I can do this for another while. And then I print it again, and now it's 31, and uh, I can I can keep doing that until I get old. Okay, uh, so I'm just going to quit out of this. I am going to now do it with the optimization. Okay, and I'm gonna try the same thing again so i'm gonna do b14 i'm gonna run it and as i run it you see it has now skipped straight to line 19 and okay it just goes to the code and it has skipped where's that loop i can't see the loop because the optimizer has just gotten rid of it it figured out that loop is just not necessary it doesn't do anything Okay, so I'm, I'm going to remove that now again. So that is the preprocessor and the compilation uh, discussed. So the compiler, it will just take the C code and it will change it into 
assembly code. Okay, I can look at that too. Okay, GCC dash capital S main dot C. And now what am I looking at? I have this main dot S here. And this is the assembly. Okay, I don't know much about assembly. So, um, you know, I don't honestly understand much about what this does. But this is the assembly code that GCC produces. Okay, so that's the assembly part. The linker is basically, what it's going to do, it, it's going to process those functions. It's going to do them one by one. The linker is basically where it weaves all the things together so that when you call a function, it just jumps into code to the correct location where you find that function, right? Uh, it also deals with um, libraries. If you use libraries in your code, it's just going to make sure everything is linked up properly and all the functions are pointing to the right place in the code. Okay, then the last thing I want to show you, I want to compile with a library. What happens when you have a library? I'm, I'm going to do it here. I'm going to use Cairo. So basically, this is the Hello World equivalent of Cairo. I just got that code of that website. If I compile this, I need GCC to be able to find all of those functions that begin with Cairo. So let me do this the first time. And it's going to give me an error, but just, just to show you. Okay, and now it's complaining. It can't find all that Cairo stuff. So what is one step I need to do is I need to include the header file. I need to include Cairo.h. So that's the first step towards fixing that. Now that is still not going to work. Let us see now. Uh, and what is it saying? It's saying it cannot find Cairo.h. So by default, it will look in the directory user include. There might be a couple of other directories where it's going to look. And then it's just going to stop. So if it's in a directory where GCC is not going to look um, for automatically, then you have to include. So that's the dash I. Okay, I for include directory, capital I. And then the actual directory where you can find the header file. So now that should be better. That it, that is still not going to work, but that should be better. Okay, and now it says undefined reference. What has happened? It has found the prototypes of those functions, but it doesn't find the actual code of those functions. That's because when we get to the linker stage. Um, and in fact, it says here LD. So LD is the linker. The linker wasn't able to find those functions, the, the actual code that makes up those functions. And so it complained. So what I need to do here is, I, first of all, I need it to tell it to use the library. So that's be dash L Cairo. And I need to tell it where the library uh, is actually to be found. So that's over here. And now it will run. Okay. And same deal here. It will look in a couple of default directories. And if it doesn't find it, you have to specify where to find it with the dash L. If it is a default directory, like is the case here, then you can actually get away with not putting it there. And so now I should have my hello. If I run the hello, it's going to have made that hello PNG file. And I have my hello word here in a PNG 
uh, made by Cairo. Okay, so those are the main things I wanted to tell you. I hope you learned something. I hope you found it interesting. And thanks for watching.